Hey everyone, why don't we talk about why you shouldn't be an English teacher in China? Find a place, find a place. Ooh, this looks like a perfect thing. So these guys I should do another video about, but basically they're food delivery people. And they're right now just waiting for some orders. Check out that guy's hair. Okay, so let's get started with why I don't think you should be teaching English in China. So I think it's important to start with a little bit of backstory on me first and why you should listen to me about teaching English in China. If you want to skip straight to the reasons, they'll be listed out in the chapters below or you can go to this time here for the first reason. I came here teaching English in China in about 2015. I had recently graduated and I had found an advertisement to come and teach English. Naturally, if you're not inside of the country, you're going to be working with an agent. And these agents are trying to get anyone into their training centers or schools. Anyone that can speak English or is from uh, a, an English background, uh, English is the first language country, they will want to go forward with your request. At least that's how it was when I came. When I came, the only real qualifications were that you had a university degree that could easily be faked and that you were over a certain age. That was pretty much the only limitations. I didn't have a TEFL, I didn't have a, any sort of certificate for teaching English. And I just came here on a whim. And I was actually getting paid about 4,000 RMB when I came over from an agent, which is about 400 pounds a month. And anyone that has worked in China would know that 4,000 RMB is not even enough to rent an apartment. They did pay for my apartment, but 4,000 RMB a month to, to live is just not enough. When I first started, I was working in primary schools. Um, I was working in the direct school. So I would wake up every day, 7 a.m., go on the metro, because I didn't have money for taxis. And I would head to the school where I taught 40 minute classes. But essentially what I would do is very simple stuff like ABC, Apple, Banana, Phonics kind of stuff. Um, and then I'd put on Tom and Jerry for the last five minutes of each class to kill the time. I was mainly just used to supplement the, the Chinese teachers or English lessons. Eventually I then moved to a training center. Now the training center is um, a place for kids to go after school where they can learn more English and have fun learning English. You basically become like a clown. The pay was much nicer, but I worked different hours, which I will get into for my reasons why. So that's a little bite-sized history of how I was teaching English in China. I haven't been teaching English now for three, four years, but I can speak on both the training center side and the public school side. Okay, so I'm going to start with my reasons why you shouldn't teach English in China. Make sure to stick to the end of the video where I'll go more into the kind of lifestyle you can expect as an English teacher and what salary you should be looking at if you do end up choosing to be an English teacher. And reason number one why you shouldn't teach English in China is the career trajectory. If you come here as a teacher, you're going to be either put into a public school or into a training center. Now, if you are a certified teacher in your home country, uh, if you've done a master's in education, you'll be going to the international schools, which are like an actual teaching career. You're not kind of just doing apples, bananas, cats. Um, you're teaching very rigorously and from the international syllabuses. So if you're, an, if you're a qualified English teacher, then perhaps this isn't the video for you. But for the rest of you, you've got to think about your career, career trajectory if you end up coming to English to teach China. Coming to English to teach China. Coming to English to teach China. With no other plans. If teaching is not your passion as well, and then basically you're putting your life on pause. Think about it, you come here when you're 20, uh, 21, or even, you know, 19. You're gonna come here and you're gonna spend a year or two teaching. Depending on where you are, you might have been able to save up a bit of money. Now, unless you 
have a plan for that save those savings or if you have a plan for continuing teaching as your career you've basically put your life on pause for two years if you go back to your home countries i'm sorry but they're probably not going to accept i was teaching english in china as good work experience for any sorts of jobs that aren't related to teaching so unless you think you're going to be teaching as a career and you want to get some classroom hours in and some TEFL practice if you're just using teaching English as a way to explore and travel then there are many other countries that I would recommend going to rather than China that is a question for all the people that are still in TEFL and that's a personal opinion for me I love China maybe you will love it too but I think a lot of people don't like it here and it might be a bit of a big risk putting all of your eggs into coming to China to teach English if you end up not enjoying it my second reason for why you shouldn't teach English in China is the education system itself. Now recently there have been a lot of changes actually. The government have regulated after teaching curriculums and there's been a big impact in training centers um, in China where they can provide after class English lessons to certain kids. Also, when it comes to education in China, um, this is from my perspective, having lived here for six years and taught here for a while. Kids study in order to pass the test. And there are very robotic methods of teaching from what I saw in Chinese schools. Very much copy what the teacher does. There's no real critical thinking exercises. The kids are essentially parroting um, what they should say or learn in order to finish the, the the tests that they have throughout their very the, the kids in China are, are they have no rest it's like homework 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 back to school homework extracurricular piano class homework after school English club homework the kids here have an incredible workload so for some of them they don't really care about learning English but their parents have still put them into a training center to learn English or you've got them for 40 minutes in the public school and they just cannot be bothered as I'm sure many other people were when they were learning a second language in school just I don't have I don't care about this I don't need to use English so the education system in this context also just means you're going to be teaching you're going to be choosing between public school and training center unless you're unless you can go to an international school the training center you're going to have no weekends you're going to be working nine till six thirty seven on the weekends and throughout the week you're going to be working from like 3 p.m to 9 p.m so if you're in a train center you're going to have no social life other than the other teachers and if you're in a public school then you're going to have to deal with the education system from the public school. So you're going to have to have those 40 minute classes. You might have to do an extra culture club. You're going to have to do the office hours where you'll feel like I've already planned my lessons for how Apple sounds. What am I going to do for the rest of the time I'm here? Some schools, they might let you leave early. Other schools, you're just going to have to stay there and they feel like they're getting their money's worth if you're in the office even if you don't do anything. Okay, so let's move on to workload. No matter whether you're in a public school or a training center, there is no uniform workload that you're gonna have. So while I was in a public school, my workload was maybe 15 hours of teaching a week with about 30 hours office hours. So I would be working for 30 hours a week. Some, day, some days I'd have four classes back to back, other days I'd have like two classes and the workload changes depending on the kids that you get or the school that you have the harder the classes are the, the more you're going to feel like you're working like like the workload is a lot but for for the most part i think public schools are relatively low workload now for the training center my only tips for you if you do decide to come to china teach english if you go to a training center is don't be a good teacher that was my mistake I came in, I have good rapport with the kids. Of course, my English accent is the best. Uh, my, even though I don't know anything about like grammar or when someone says, teacher, why does this happen in English? Why do we say this instead of this? And I just say, I don't know, it just is the way it is. Just learn it. 
But in a training center, if you're a good teacher, you're going to be working basically without breaks. You might have 10 minute breaks between classes. So in some training centers, you'll need to do feedback for the kids, for the teachers and the parents group. You're going to have to be doing like end of unit assessments. You're going to have to be doing demo classes. It's crazy. Uh, I still remember the feeling when I gave in my one month notice at my training center job. That month was like so long. It took so long to finish, but when it was done, I felt so happy. Next reason why you shouldn't teach English in China is the lifestyle. Whether you're in a school or training center, you're going to have a different lifestyle. And also cities I've been to in China where if people say they're an English teacher, then, you know, people don't really look look at them with that much respect they think that they're just here to make a paycheck and they're not really doing any any meaningful job for me i don't really mind i've been there so i know what it's like i don't think i'd ever go back to being a teacher unless i really had to and there were definitely times where i was like uh yeah i'm teaching english in china um but that was four four or five years ago and attitudes were slightly different back then okay my final reason why you shouldn't teach English in China. You need to have the right mindset. If you are someone that gets annoyed at the little things, if you're someone that doesn't like bureaucracy or inefficiency, if you're someone that doesn't plan to learn the Chinese language or, or at least try to have Chinese friends or Chinese partner or any exposure to the Chinese language, then you're going to miss a whole section of China and understanding how people think once you understand their language, then I then then that's the wrong mindset. If you're here to think I'm just going to make money and then peace out, that's probably a nice mindset to have to get you like you could really make a lot of money here if you were if you were hustling, if you're doing like a training center job and then part time English teaching, tutoring on the side, you could make at least £3,000 a month plus. If you're here because you think that you're going to be able to travel around China while you're teaching, um, doesn't really work out that way because when you do have times off, everybody else has time off and you are going to get swamped by people Traveling during a Chinese holiday is a whole different type of travel hell. I, I guess what I'm saying is, if you haven't already done more research than just this video about coming to China, definitely do some more research. See if it's a lifestyle that fits you. You can watch some more of my videos to find out my opinions and thoughts about China. I do think this is a great country and the city I'm in, Shenzhen, is really nice. But I don't know if I'd still be here if I was teaching. Okay. So for those of you that stuck to the end of the video, these are my salary tips for being an English teacher in China. If you're in a public school, don't take anything less than 15,000 renminbi per month. If you're in a training center, you're going to be looking for at least 25,000 renminbi per month. Okay? You can do better, you can do worse, depending on your certifications, your, your experience. But those should be your minimums at least. For a healthy lifestyle in Shenzhen, you need so you need to be keeping around ten thousand to ten thousand plus renminbi a month. Will be giving you a good lifestyle. Okay, I hope you enjoyed this video. Um, if there's anything else you'd like to know about teaching in China, what it's really like, I am going to do another one about what it's really like. But these were my reasons why you shouldn't teach English in China. Stay tuned for my what it's really like teaching English in China video that will come up whenever I make it. Thank you guys for watching. See you in the next video.